At long last, the other shoe drops in the NBA trade world as Donovan Mitchell reportedly available out of Utah. Does that change the Kevin Durant landscape? How does it affect the Suns? And most of all, does this mean we're in for more waiting? All of it on today's Locked on Suns. You are Locked on Suns. Your daily Phoenix Suns podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We are back. This is Locked On Phoenix Suns. We are part of the Locked On Podcast Network, and I'm your host, Brendan Clean, a credential media member covering the Suns for the past five seasons and a writer at suns.com and Dime Magazine. A big thank you for making Locked on Suns your first listen today and every day. If you're finding us on your favorite podcast platform, hit follow, hit subscribe. Make sure you don't miss us in your feed every single morning. And if you're finding us on YouTube, that is the best way to support the show. Go ahead, hit that subscribe button down below and drop me a comment. Just tell me how you're feeling. It is time for a vibe check. Appreciate you guys once again for making Lockdown Suns your first listen every day. You can follow us on Twitter, keep track as well. Maybe get my musings on this chaos at Lockdown PHX Suns or at Brendan Clean 14. That is my personal account. But let us dive into the shenanigans. Today, Adrian Wojnarowski on ESPN reports that the Utah Jazz are finally making, or at least listening, to Donovan Mitchell trade offers. Woj, in his article at ESPN, said, quote, after the Jazz earlier shut down inquiries about all-star guard Donovan Mitchell, rival teams say they are now showing a willingness to listen on possible trade scenarios, sources tell ESPN. The asking price appears to be steep, but in the wake of Utah's recent Rudy Gobert blockbuster deal to Minnesota, the Jazz are no longer simply dismissing calls on Mitchell, sources said, end quote. So we'll get to the timing part of this. Because I think that's where everybody's mind is going. We're already close to the middle of August, or July, actually. And uh, Summer League's already done. And yet here now is another wrinkle, another ripple in all of this. So we'll get to that. But I want to just quickly sift through what does this particular news in and of itself just mean? Because I think that's important here, too, to just set, set expectations. Be thinking about this the right way. So NBA teams across the whole league right now, basically with that information in mind, coupled with the trade demand that trade request that Kevin Durant made, what was it? Three weeks ago now, two weeks ago. I don't even know. Yeah. About two weeks ago is they need to decide one of two things, either. Well, three things. One would be we're sitting out all of it. A lot of teams will just be in that camp, but of the teams who want to make a move, They have to think, A, should I give up stuff to Utah in hopes that Donovan Mitchell can then go to Brooklyn and I get Kevin Durant? That's option one for NBA Team X. Option two is, do I just want to trade for Donovan Mitchell outright? Do I just prioritize Donovan Mitchell as my target ahead of Kevin Durant now, now that I know that Mitchell is available? So here's kind of how I sort things. And I might be missing teams that come out of the woodwork, but we heard that with Durant and I don't think it ended up happening. So I think the teams are pretty well known at this point. Also, there's only 30 of them. It's not like there's going to be a newly formed 31st team that goes and snacks Kevin Durant. It's not that complicated. So here are the teams. I think for the Raptors, Knicks, and Mavs, I think trading for Mitchell makes more sense based on their timeline and roster. Now, Conversation for a different time is which of those teams could actually get Mitchell, but I I think the Mavs we know would be in the market for more perimeter talent. We know Toronto's been in the KD talks. We know the Knicks are always in all talks. And I think those three teams, Mitchell makes more sense. They have a younger roster and they have a more developed wing and front court depth that could play next to and around Mitchell to make him the best that he can be. I think Miami, the Heat, can probably go either way. I think the beauty of their team building is they have Bam Adebayo. So a Mitchell Adebayo partnership would be a nice foundation going forward. But they also have Jimmy Butler and Kyle Lowry. 
who could help win you a title right now. And they've gotten pretty darn close to doing that in two of the past three seasons. So I think the Heat could do either thing. The Suns don't really have any need for Mitchell. I mean, um, their timeline is right now during the rest of Chris Paul's career. And obviously Donovan Mitchell could be a significant help to you, but you're not going to play. It's not going to be the best for everybody to play Booker, Paul, and Mitchell all together. And so I think the Suns will stay aggressive on Durant. That doesn't mean that they couldn't make Mitchell the centerpiece, that they couldn't do option one, as I said, which would be to send a package to Utah that then allows Mitchell to go to Brooklyn and become the centerpiece that gets you Kevin Durant. That could still be an option, but the Suns aren't going to pursue Mitchell. They're more in that first camp of let's use Donovan and the trade with Utah as a way to get KD. The other side of this whole thing is Donovan Mitchell is going to cost less to get in terms of a trade. He also is on a cheaper contract. So I guess he costs less in that way too. But at the same time, when it comes to his contract, he is one of these guys that is actually on that designated rookie maximum extension, that term that we've been throwing around for weeks related to the Kevin Durant talks where because Ben Simmons is already in Brooklyn and he is on one of these types of contracts, the Nets are prevented from trading for two of those. So if Mitchell were to be routed to Brooklyn, we he can't end up on the same team as Simmons. So obviously that means Ben Simmons, as I've been saying for weeks, as these talks lingered into day seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, whatever, is... Why have we not heard anything about potential Ben Simmons trades? I think that could happen now because the Nets would be very silly to not be intrigued by Donovan Mitchell. He is probably the best player that could reasonably be available to them for KD because we know Ingram and Scotty Barnes are not. So if Simmons can go somewhere else, Donovan can go to Brooklyn and all things are good. And it will take less to trade for him if you're another team. So the next step With all of that in mind is to see whether the Mitchell trade gets folded into these Kevin Durant talks or because he might cost a little bit less to go get because he uh, fits as a younger player in more situations and because he hasn't made a request to go to a specific team, we could very well see a suitor just step in and go get him. The Knicks don't care that there's a Kevin Durant negotiation happening. It doesn't matter to the Knicks that the Suns would very much like if Donovan Mitchell became the centerpiece of a Kevin Durant trade that landed KD in Phoenix. The Knicks want to go get Donovan Mitchell in all likelihood, and they're going to go do that. So that's the part where you wonder, does the timeline actually, it could in its own way, it could get sped up with all of these different branches of the tree. But I'll explain to you next why I think The long and short of this from the Sun side is that it's going to add time and complication to those negotiations. I'll explain all of it. First, today's show brought to you guys by Rock Auto with so many mixed models and trim packages out there from car manufacturers. It's borderline impossible to wander into a chain auto parts store or heaven forbid a car dealership and get the parts that you need at a reasonable price. So why endure that intimidating questioning that you get from the guy behind the counter or wait and deal with the lead time on the order or the inventory issues, go to rockauto.com. That's the bottom line. Save time and money, switch to Rock Auto. Save 30, 50, even 100% on the same parts that you would get at a chain store or car dealership by switching to Rock Auto. They've been serving do-it-yourselfers online for over 20 years, and they're a family business, so they know really, truly, at their core, what matters to people, and that's saving money, getting things easily, and having their car in good working condition, most importantly. So go explore the easy-to-use website today to find the solution to your auto parts needs. Again, that's rockauto.com. Go there now. See all the parts available for your car or truck and write locked on in their how-did-you-hear-about-us box so they know we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, and all the parts your car will ever need. rockauto.com. Let's go... A couple more details out of the way before we get into the waiting time and whether there will be waiting time. So getting a little bit more into the specifics on this, I still see 
DeAndre Ayton as being one of the better options to go to Utah in a Mitchell deal. And John Gambadoro and maybe others did report at the time of the Gobert trade when it, when, you know, Brian Windhorst went viral with the whole, what is Utah doing? And we all had a good laugh about that. But I, at that time we had heard that Ayton was a player that the jazz liked. So being that he's maybe a player they like, and that he's, still a good young player who can get better. I think he's still one of the better centerpieces that could be available to the Jazz in a Mitchell deal. But we have to keep in mind the Jazz could easily prefer OG Ananobi or even RJ Barrett. And I think RJ Barrett, if he became available, would become probably the single best player that you could see change hands, but obviously there's a long way to go. On the Simmons front, I think the Bulls, Mavs, Grizzlies, and Blazers, and I had tweeted this a while ago. I might have even brought it up on the show before when I've been wondering and screaming into the heavens where on earth, why on earth is Ben Simmons not out there in trade talks? Why have we not heard X team is interested in Simmons or the Nets are pursuing avenues of getting rid of Simmons in order to facilitate a Kevin Durant trade? We've never heard any of this, but I think... Chicago, Dallas, Memphis, and Portland. Those th- four teams make a ton of sense to me to bring in a young wing defender and playmaker like Simmons. As we continue, there will be leaks about where Mitchell wants to go, and we know he's from the New York area, so that is important to consider here as well. And last but not least, Danny Ainge is going to want to win this trade. He just smoked Minnesota value-wise in the trade. I don't hate the Gobert trade for Minnesota as much as some do, but... It's undoubtable, un, undoubted that Ainge got a lot for Rudy Gobert, more than most would have expected, and a big enough haul that he's really setting himself up for the rebuild. And, and likely it's part of why he's okay trading Mitchell now because he feels like, hey, we already have stable ground to start to rebuild on. Let's just add to it. Still, this new huge wrinkle means more waiting. That's inevitable. Utah deserves some blame in that. I mean, they dragged their feet waiting for Mitchell to to make Mitchell available in a public way. Even before this Woj report, you heard Justin Zanuck, the general manager of the Jazz, saying change is inevitable. We wouldn't avoid trading Donovan, but it's not our priority right now. It's not what we want to do, but but obviously things can change and, and things happen. And basically saying we're open for business. But again, why wait? Why did it take so long? I still don't get that part. I talked about Mitchell possibilities on this podcast last week, if not earlier. But now you're only just seeing the start of a real bidding war because the Jazz decided to make this public. Maybe they thought that they were putting the tea leaves out there well enough to say, hey, look, we're we're setting, we're resetting ourselves. You know, come one, come all, make your offers and come get Donovan Mitchell. And maybe that the, team, the NBA just didn't respond like they had hoped. So now this is them going through Woj to say, hey, snap, snap, wake up. We're trading our best player. Come get him. When it comes to the timing, with all that said, a couple of comps that I went and looked at because they've been thrown around by NBA reporters, national folks, guys who've been doing this for a long time, Winhorst, et cetera. Uh, I went back and looked at a couple of these examples. So one is Kawhi Leonard's trade to the Raptors. It feels like, at least in my memory, I remember that one. It was like, oh my goodness, this is never going to end. But it actually happened on July 18th, which if you're looking at your calendar now, reading, listening to this, is less than a week from where we are right now. It happened fairly early on in things. And what, from what I remember, Summer League was kind of talked about as what spurred this along. But nevertheless... I don't know if we're going to hit that five days, six days, seven days from now. I, I'm not exactly sure. So the closest comp that I see is the massive Dwight Howard deal in 2012, which included, if you remember, Andre Godala to the Nuggets and Andrew Bynum to the Sixers. And that took up until August 10th to get done, okay? Because it was so complex. And also, if you remember, that was the summer after the lockout. And so the season had been such a sprint. I believe Dwight had asked out during the lockout season, if that even sounds right. And it took them months to actually get it done. 
because again, it, it evolved to include two other star level, all-star caliber players in Iguodala and Andrew Bynum. So this feels like that. If this is something that's going to ultimately expand to potentially include DeAndre Ayton and Donovan Mitchell in addition to Kevin Durant, or let's not always assume it's the Suns that are going to get Durant because we don't know if it's uh, Tyler Hero, if it is uh, RJ Barrett, like that type of sizable, massive deal, including multiple teams giving and taking a lot it adds days and days and days to this stuff. So I think that's the closest comp. At the same time, I mentioned if there's a little bit of a, of an inspired, quickened bidding war for Mitchell now, if a team like the Knicks, who I keep coming back to, were to want to get involved, then it might not give the Nets or the Jazz or the Suns the luxury of waiting around on their, with their hand, sitting on their hands, waiting for owners and agents to get their crap together and agree to something. It might make it say, okay, crap, the Knicks are currently offering Obi Toppin and a bunch of picks and this and that. We need to get our offers together and make this happen. So I don't know which direction it necessarily goes, but I definitely lean toward this adding days to the admittedly already longer than I expected trade talks. As all of this plays out though, as we pin, pin, pinball back and forth between I do think it'll add time and I don't. Again, I do think it'll add time, but I just want to add this last bit of context. The entire league is being held up right now. Darn near half the NBA is being held up. Let me just quickly rifle through that. The Lakers with Kyrie. The Pacers and Spurs reportedly potentially going to be involved as teams taking back extra salary. The Suns with Aiton. We know the Pacers are also involved there. The Cavs with Colin Sexton, who's a restricted free agency, plus any teams who would want to sign and trade or sign Colin Sexton. The same with the Bulls and Kobe White, who is also restricted free agent. If a team has cap space or a sign and trade opportunity to get Kobe White, those teams are involved. Atlanta has been looking for a John Collins trade forever. The Pacers, once again, with the Miles Turner trade, we have the Schroeder, Dennis Schroeder's free agency, where he seems to definitely be waiting to Go sign with whatever the best contender looks like when all of the dust has cleared for that taxpayer mid-level at about six and a half million. Not to mention the Nets, the Jazz, the Suns, the Heat, the Raptors, all these teams that are directly involved that we already know about. That is once again, darn near half of the entire NBA. August 10th, that date is going to be the one that sticks out to me. It's the very latest that I could see this lasting, but that's still a month away. So even if it doesn't get that far, it feels like we need to hunker down and wait a little bit longer, maybe a lot of bit longer. Let's look at another major Suns offseason domino that still hasn't fallen, but could affect how the Kevin Durant trade is ultimately received around the NBA and what's possible for the Suns if they get him. But first, guys, today's show also brought to you by Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting, analysis, news, and info all year long. Find the latest developments and news, including this year's baseball regular season. We have uh, the Open Championship in golf. We have the start of the European soccer season and the lead up to the World Cup. Sports never slows down. People will tell you July and August are quiet, but that's just because they're not looking hard enough and Bet Online has you covered for all of it. They remain the best spot for scores, analysis, podcast, articles, all of it. In addition to esports, live betting, and your favorite sports score. So head to the website again, that's betonline.net or use their mobile app to learn more about the latest trends and action. Bet online where the game starts. Adam Silver hosted a press conference today after the NBA's Board of Governors meeting in Las Vegas, which is an annual tradition. The first full week of Summer League where all of the owners come together, meet, negotiate stuff, um, in terms of league, league rule changes and things like that. They are getting rid of the take foul. They are potentially going to be adding this in-season tournament. And afterward, in that press conference, Silver was asked about the Robert Sarver investigation. And his comment was that the NBA is reaching its, quote, final stage of the investigation. Now, first of all, that doesn't tell us anything about answer. Pretty embarrassing to me on the part of the league how 
long it has taken and how little it has let out. It definitely gives the indication of wanting this to go away as a story. And I get, truly get, that at the end of the day, Adam Silver is an employee of Robert Sarver and the other 29 owners. I get that that's his job and it is what it is. But I think it's clear to me that the league was probably hoping to drop the report or leak the contents of the report or levy its sort of punishment, whatever ends up being in August when nobody really pays attention to the NBA, when a lot of the people in the league and who work for teams are are, are uh, off on vacation or gone. So the timing of the Kevin Durant talks obviously complicates this. I mean, I just threw out that August 10th date from the Dwight Howard trade as sort of an end date for these talks in the future. This shows to me, I mean, look, there's no great time to drop something with ugly allegations about prominent people. There's not a great time. Yes. Oh, let's do it in the summer when nobody's watching. Okay. Well, now there's a Kevin Durant trade and everybody's watching and the league is on uh, just complete pause as all of this plays out. The league should just release the report or leak the report or whatever it's going to be if that's if it's done, if it's ready, or if it's even close to ready, wrap the dang thing up, okay? Wrap it up. I don't think there's more interviews going on. I don't know what the holdup could be. I obviously want due diligence done. I obviously want a punishment that's fair, that sets both, is in line with past precedent and sets a proper future precedent and puts facts out there. All of that is obviously the purpose of this whole thing, but it's been months since any sort of report from Baxter Holmes or anybody else about the status of this thing. It doesn't feel like much new has come out. It felt like people were prepared for it to come out after the finals. Now we're almost a month after that. So just get off of it. Finish it. Tell us what happened and allow everybody to move on. Robert Sarver if we're looking at the tea leaves again, Robert Sarver had a statement in the press release about book Supermax extension. Again, those things are very selectively done. Sarver has not had press. He doesn't have a statement in the press release where the Suns up Ish Wainwright's contract to a full season deal or any like they could have had a statement from James Jones in that press release. Somebody somewhere chose for it to be Sarver. And that is a statement of either I'm not going anywhere. I'm emboldened by the delay on this investigation, or potentially I already know the results of this investigation and I'm not going anywhere. I'm staying right here. So those are just some things to keep in mind. I think the league will probably still drop this in August, but it will and should get a ton of attention. People in the organization need clarity. The people who still work in this workplace that is allegedly pretty dang toxic. People, fans need clarity. And most of all, I mean, at the core of all of this, the NBA oversees a ton of local businesses, effectively. And the public in those cities deserves to know the extent to which the ugly allegations against Robert Sarver or their owner are true. You, in what world would it be reasonable to expect any investigation with this big of consequences to last almost a full year? It's just, it just starts to raise eyebrows of... Did, are you are you doing this investigation badly? Are you bad at it? And that's why it's taking you way longer than it reasonably should. Is that what's going on here? Are you are you incapable of settling on what the punishment should be? Like, there's just no good reason unless there are just continuously more and more of these interviews to be done. I just if you interviewed everybody that ever worked for the Suns under Robert Sarver. I think you could probably still do that in eight months in terms of people who relevantly matter and would have something to say here. You could probably do that in eight, in eight months if it was important, you know? So I just, I don't, th- I, I can't imagine that there's something still out there that's being waited on in order for the investigation to be complete. I think that it's a final decision on what the punishment or what the decision will be and it's timing of the release to make as many people look good as possible. And I just don't accept that as a reasonable thing to be doing. I get people protect themselves. I get 
the PR and the image of all of it, I'm not dumb. But at a certain point, if this is coming out, there's no version of this where nothing comes out. There's no version where they wait long enough and nobody remembers that there's an investigation into one of the teams for p- pretty ugly stuff, right? If it's going to come out anyway, you're not running away from it, then it starts to be a matter of right and wrong. Just do the right thing. Put the report out as soon as you can. Ignore whatever blowback is inevitably going to come no matter when you run it. And just deal with whatever comes as a result. It's not Adam Silver's fault that Robert Sarver made a bunch of people really mad and and mistreated people and ran an organization that led to some of those allegations. It's not Adam Silver's fault. It's Robert Sarver's fault. And it's about time that he dealt with the repercussions of, of what he did and that we all find out what it is that he actually did. More to come on all of this. Mitchell, KD, Sarver, everybody. We don't know anything. We are in waiting game mode. We are completely in limbo, but that's the fun of the off season. That is the fun of doing a daily show and you guys all getting to listen to it. So a big thank you once again for making Locked On Suns your first listen today, tomorrow, and every day. Now go make Locked On NBA your second listen to catch up on all the rumors and notes around the league in addition to what's going on in Vegas. Summer League. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow.